This school's parking lot is empty right now, but come Monday it'll be filled with students. And if that weren't already stressful enough, the statewide assessment exam this year is going to be a little bit harder. After four years of construction, the El Paso Children's Hospital is almost complete. But for one El Paso doctor, it was a vision 31 years in the making. It used to be packed here every Sunday night, but once they took away the alcohol, the people disappeared too. It's not the average El Paso one that dumps one or two tires here that is causing the problem. It's the bigger companies who are dumping not hundreds, but actually thousands of tires at this site. Now, police say they're still continuing their investigation and no arrests have been made yet. They say if you do have any information on this case, you can call Crime Stoppers at 566-TIPS. And now all the controversy surrounding benefits for domestic partners is something that the county may have to deal with as well. Reporting live from the east side, David Natividad, KFOX News at 6. I mean, you get up in the morning and start your car, you're going to know it's, you're going to know it's gone because it sounds like a, a race car. The catalytic converter is located up here towards the front of the exhaust system. It's made to basically filter out your, your uh, carbon monoxide. Ernie Morgas, owner of Ernie's Body Shop, has noticed an increase in the number of car owners having their catalytic converter stolen. It's been, it's been because of the economy, I'm thinking that's what it is. Thieves are targeting the converters because of the platinum metal inside that they can sell for about $50 and because of how easy it can be removed. And what they're using is a saw, what they call a sawzall, but it's a cordless sawzall. And you can probably eliminate it within about three minutes. Just a few days ago, a KFOX TV employee had his converter stolen in the business parking lot. You can see on this surveillance video the thief pulling into the lot and then driving away. Trucks and SUVs are usually the vehicles that are targeted because of the large open space that a thief has to work with. And the cost to get a new one is pretty high. Roughly you're talking from the area of about 210 to up to $800, $900 for a converter. The El Paso police say that these kind of crimes usually happen in business parking lots. If people when they're cruising through a parking lot, driving through a parking lot and they notice uh, somebody working underneath the vehicle, you might want to notify the police or at least um, see if there's another vehicle waiting nearby that might be a getaway vehicle, if you will. It's ridiculous. I've lived out here 14 years, and it's got worse. Over 100 acres of desert along Dyer Street in northeast El Paso is covered in trash. You take a walk out in the desert a little way, you'll see trash couches, uh, mattresses, all kinds of garbage. Northeast Rep Carl Robinson noticed the problem a few weeks ago and was shocked by the amount of tires in the desert. Carl Robinson says it's not the average El Paso one that dumps one or two tires here that is causing the problem. It's the bigger companies who are dumping not hundreds, but actually thousands of tires at this site. He believes companies are dumping tires and huge slabs of building material in the desert to avoid paying disposal fees. You, when you see tires like this, this has came from a business. What business, we don't know. That's what we hope to find out. Where are they coming from so we can put a stop to it? Because of the size of material being dumped, Robinson says the culprits could face heavy penalties. Now, for example, this many tires, this would be a felony conviction. Environmental specialists say the number of tires is a health hazard because they collect rainwater and attract mosquitoes. And the mosquitoes are bad for people. They carry diseases and all kinds of stuff. Robinson has met with El Paso Police and the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality to figure out a way to stop the dumping. One of the challenges that we have with for law enforcement is catching the individual. He says the desert area is private property, and once the city finds out who the owners are, they'll suggest putting up fences and no trespassing signs. David Natividad, KFOX News at 9. Growing up, Andres and Luis Garcia spent most of their time here, in their Upper Valley backyard, doing what they loved, playing soccer. Their lives came to a tragic end Saturday morning when their car crashed into a pole on the freeway, splitting the car into two. Police believe speed and possibly alcohol was to blame. They had good, uh, good values. They were great students. They were good, uh, the best athletes, you know. Older brother Ruben Garcia says he's still shocked that such a tragedy could happen to kids who stayed out of trouble. It never crosses your mind that you're going to lose uh, a brother that way, you know. If there were people, I mean, persons that were like always in trouble or something, you, you kind of like imagine that something could happen to them, you know, like they could get in trouble or they're drunk and they're driving fast or whatever, you know, but they weren't that kind of kids, you know.
Both brothers were star players at Franklin High School. Andres Garcia played on the varsity team since he was a freshman. He was great, man. He was the captain in his last year. He was a great player. Younger brother Luis was supposed to go to Pennsylvania on a soccer scholarship in the fall. Instead, the Garcia family is now left with a devastating void. It's like the worst feeling you can ever have, man. It's the worst. But Ruben Garcia has a message for all the young drivers who are out on the road. Be careful, man. You're not Superman. You have to be careful. One day you're here, and one day you're not. I'll see them on the other side, man. That's it. Eight hours a day with a guy you don't like, just quit. Horrible Bosses is the name of a new movie out in theaters, but it's a situation that people in El Paso deal with all the time. One of my first positions when I uh, actually came to Texas was a boss I was really frustrated with. So Rob did what he thought was best at the time. And if you didn't see him his way, it was really tough to deal with that. And, and in the end, uh, I moved on. <laughs> Quitting your job may be one way to deal with a bad boss, but HR professionals say there's several steps you could take before walking out the door. But the big thing is for employees to remember and recognize is that they have to communicate with their supervisor. They have to tell their supervisor of their intentions because the supervisor is responsible for a goal setting. Fred says that all companies are different and that employees should know what the best ways to voice their complaints are. I think employees should be knowledgeable of the company's policies. Every company has policies and procedures and best practices to utilize in the form of a grievance procedure or there's always an avenue to discuss concerns or complaints. But James Pettis, who himself is a boss, says it might be better to go with the simpler solution. People should just quit. They don't like their bosses. You can find something else. Be happy.